Hello, Emily Miller. I think I had a glitch on my end. Hey, K. Richburg. <laughs> I was like, I was like, What's why happening? is my why is my screen frozen? There we go. I think we're good. All right. How are you today? And I think I'm all right. I think everybody's jumping on. I think we made it awesome. on. I think our connection is okay. So happy solstice, Emily. Happy solstice, Kate. Sure yes. A, isn't there some other kind of greeting for it? Like a good Yule, I think, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Anyways. I feel like maybe we need to think that on think on that. Maybe yeah. we do. Happy return of the light. That's what I'm glad about. I'll tell I was you. thinking that today as I was walking the dogs this morning and thinking that, you know, it's not so bad in the mornings, but in the afternoons I have to start walking by 3.30 or I run out of daylight. And No, uh, for sure. I am I am loving being kind of attuned into the seasons and uh, noticing when it's lighter or darker out. I think it's kind of interesting, but I'm ready to head for the light at this point. Well, not not literally. Maybe just figure. Into the light. figure. <laughs> yeah. Emily, walk towards the light. Um, it's good. No, it's good. And we're gonna. Our days will start to get literally. longer. Um, yeah, um, a month out from now, things will be a little a little lighter. Um, and, and we'll be saying we'll be almost in Tucson. Uh, right. I know. We'll be saying how fast that month went. Yeah. You and I will almost be in Tucson. So, yeah, it's crazy. Um, I'm super excited about several things. Mm. Number one, your earring project. Mm. Number two, your mix that was mm. called Goldberry that we made for that. And it's actually, I think it's sitting, I thought I had it here, but I actually have November's monthly mix here. So uh, I'll go <laughs> like, oh, wait. Is this it? No, that's December's monthly mix here. I'll grab Goldberry. I think it's over there. Um, but you're going to show it too under your, um, yeah. with your, uh, with your piece. So Emily and I got our heads together after she did the, I don't know, fun with seed beads, free tip Friday or Emily chat seed beads, or, you know, that everyone loved that broadcast so much and they well, loved. Talked about looms. We no no it was the one before that you showed your vintage netted stuff remember you showed the jar oh that was well, that was just the that was the netted ornament yeah. right right but people were like I want to learn netting okay. and so we're like okay we're gonna do netting <clears throat> so I being the mix queen I said Emily choose a mix so we sat down behind our respective computers and opened up a a pages document and kept throwing different colors in it. And what resulted was this Goldberry mix. So I sent it off to Emily and she was like, this was the mix. I was like, yeah, it's the mix. So you, you kind of, uh, out of I sight, think it was, out. yeah, out of sight, out of mind completely. Um, it was a wonderful the, surprise. So yeah. <laughs> and surprise, I like here's the mix. And we um, did, uh, so you did a cool project with it and did some color blocking, which is great. Um, well, you know, the netting thing kind of got me going on thinking about this. And I, I, you know, as, as jewelry designers, Kate and I both take our inspiration from a lot of different places. And we, sometimes you pick something up in your head and you kind of, you're just sort of rolling it around in there. You're not really thinking about it. Or you're thinking, God, the technical part of that, I got to figure that out. And it goes away and it comes back and it goes away and it comes back. And it sometimes if it's something that reoccurs, then it gets kind of pushed to the front of the queue. But the um, uh, the working with the netting kind of made me think about right angle weave, which reminded me about this thing I was kind of working on. So circling around, landing the plane again, the, um, the mix was kind of, pushed towards doing this project, but also just kind of coming up with a fun new mix of beads. Um, I do like making mixes and I, I do it occasionally. I don't do it all the time because I kind of, I realize that as a seed bead, <clears throat> I often get really wrapped up in things being kind of tidy and separated. Um, and so true to form, here's my mix, which I then separated out by color. Um, Perfect. <laughs> it's a complete circle of life right there. It is. 
<clears throat> well, it looks, uh, I, whoops, I'm trying to comments here. I'm you whoops, managing there things. We go. I, I, I see am something on Instagram or on, um, on uh, YouTube there every time I can't do YouTube and Amazon or, uh, Facebook, I don't have enough screens. <laughs> I need another iPad to manage. We need another screen. Um, well, this, uh, you had, so you saw a question there, Em? I'm nope, scrolling I through them. I see everybody. Um, oh, hi. Okay. Hi, you guys. Great. Um, it's great to have everybody here. Plus you got uh, that question. We did, uh, there's a couple questions that I'm going to have you start off with. And Drea also posted, we still have some netted bead kits available. And a lot of you have been making the netted beads oh, and have really? been posting them, which is great. Um, and that was one of the things. So that, that show that Emily did, it was a free tip Friday. She talked about like her different bead stitches and she showed those vintage netted things, which went into... <clears throat> that netted bead broadcast and this right angle weave. Uh, Cause we're doing right angle weave today. Is that what this is, Em? Sort of. It's a it's a Ish. takeoff on right angle weave. It has a okay. it has probably more in common with right angle weave than with anything else. But right angle weave is very geometric and you can build it on every plane, right? So if we're mm -hmm. beading on one plane like a flat fabric, that's fine, but we can build off it this way. We can build off it this way, that way. And actually this way as well in every dimension. Um, but it is kind of, it's very squared off. It doesn't really have that round kind of lace structure to it that I, I kind of am drawn to or that I, that appeals to me. Mm -hmm. um, and so it took some, I, I had seen something long ago and I, and I had it in my mind that I knew how to do it. And um, I, I have my, my little samples here, Kate, if you want to put on that other. Oh, camera. sure. Let me, let me add you. Sure. Let add me that do that. Camera. And I'm going to oh, highlight yeah. that one. M. there Pardon? we go. Yeah, there we go. I was playing around with, um, trying to make this work. And it, it also kind of reminded me of doing daisy chains, which I don't have one at my fingertips here, um, to show you what that looks like. But, um, uh, these were the failures. <laughs> these were the ones that end up in the jar. End up um, in the jar. They're destined for the jar. Yeah, and there was a couple of failures. One was a failure of thread. <laughs> um, I he was using Fireline or Power Pro mm, Fireline. Mm -hmm. I love Fireline. I like working with it a lot, but I chose too thin a Fireline for this, and um, mm -hmm. it's really not holding its shape the way I would want it to hold its shape. So right. I picked up to that newer um, six pound Fireline. And I typically use the smoke more than any other color of the fire line, but mm -hmm. the, um, the crystal is really what I use for this project. And I think it blends and disappears nicely into the beadwork. Um, I'm not a particularly um, rigid person about my thread colors, but I do notice that the colors that I use more often are gray, um, white. I don't use black very much. I, I, for one thing, I find it hard to see, but, um, yeah. It's just one that doesn't matter. Hard to see. What's that, Emily? What's that? <laughs> it's not easy to um, follow it. If you're yeah. using dark colored beads, though, and you want to use a dark colored thread, I would highly recommend looking at some of the dark purples. Even mauve looks really good with reds and pinks. Even mm -hmm. though it doesn't perfectly match, it kind of disappears. And that's how I think of thread mostly, is that the thread's going to disappear into the background. So I mm -hmm. try typically choose a color that does that and darker colors do a better job generally <clears throat> so these guys were the first um well this was the first go round, and this didn't really work and kate and i wanted to do kate really liked this idea but she wanted me to do a bracelet so i dove into trying to do a bracelet so here's what happened with the mix you know um when we talk about um uh designing with color and we talk mm. about out the colors and things that you make sometimes the first thing you pick is not the one that works right. um this one actually has some appeal to me which is sometimes hard it might be hard for you guys to see on the screen but it almost has a braided effect that i kind of like but it's a little bit lost because i used the whole mix and i just used it indiscriminately and as i was doing this i thought oh my god those guys are going to hate me for bringing this up because it's going to be really hard 
to do this without having the colors separated. And so this is kind of what led me to choosing to do the colors in those color blocks. If you learn a new stitch by having something, having all the variables available to you, you're making it a little more challenging on yourself. And so I, I am a firm believer in doing, um, having a success first and then complicating your life. So the, this is the same stitch that I'm doing in the earring. It's just longer. So I built it as long as the bracelet was going to happen. And I actually didn't measure it to start with, which was a mistake on my part because I'm sure it shrank a little bit this mm -hmm. way, right? Um, but when you're doing a new stitch, I think it's worth it kind of understanding that the first try that you make might not be the only try that you make. Mm -hmm. um, so that was number two. Number three came along. Now we're getting kind of closer to what my idea had been. Um, I would love this in a bracelet. We could definitely do it. Um, and mm -hmm. I think if you're going to do it with the mix, I think you'd probably want two tubes um, just mm -hmm. to make sure enough of the colors that are in here and i'm not sure that all of these colors are ones that we carry at beach shop yet but eventually i'm sure they will happen and i picked three here um to kind of work on this and i really liked the idea that this kind of works a little bit on the diagonal um and kind of moves in a different shape and a different form than a lot of our other seed beads just do so mm -hmm. one that um has some interesting aspects to it and, and is not so squared off or so geometric as a lot of the- uh, That's real pretty. Is that the same stitch, Emily? Yeah. Yeah. It looks stitch. so different with in the color block, as you say, than the the mix, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's it's vastly different, but this is, yeah. this is research and development for me, right? This is yeah. not, it's not always the be all end all, the first thing I pick up even after right. all these years of, of doing things, you'll see it in your mind's eye and you try to make it happen, but be, be open to the, trying to give you the soft landing here. <laughs> be yeah. open to the fact that sometimes the first thing you do is not the last thing that you're going to do. Right. Um, Makes sense. That's a, it's, I, you are getting a lot of love for that bracelet too, Emily, but I think they're get, you're getting a lot of love for all the incarnations. Yeah, it's kind of fun, you know, and this is um, uh, only two across, two rows rather than three rows. So things do kind of work up quickly in this little stitch. It's kind of interesting that mm -hmm. um, you do get kind of, you move along kind of quickly because you add a few beads at a time. A little bit like right angle weave. It does kind of have a little bit of speed to it, which is a, that's a benefit and a reward. I'll put these guys aside. So uh, just so as you know, back over there one two and three um one of those will make it in this these guys are going to make it into the jar but these other guys will probably stay with the original project um i did separate out a few of my beads from the mix although when i was doing this mix myself uh, and working from it i just choose from the mix i don't so i don't take the time to separate them but i think it's nice to be able to see each of the colors kind of alone mm -hmm. um the uh, dark coral, dark bronze, uh, pearl, and I shorten these names because I it's too much to say Lionsberry Luster 16 times. Um, there's the berry, uh, the sienna, and the matte transparent dark topaz. That's the only one that I didn't use in this particular design. You could blend it in if you wanted with the sienna, if, if that was a place you might want to find it, um, or not. Your choice. Beater's choice. But, um, you know, fun. it's fun to play with a mix of colors that you may not have chosen each one on its own. And so here it is, right? Uh, yeah, it looks so great. Just one of those little um, porcelain watercolor trays. They're pretty available at art supply stores and stuff. I like them because they're kind of heavy. They don't tip over too easily. Um, but it's just a good, it's a good way to, to separate your beads out momentarily while you're working on them. Uh, one thing I want to just briefly go over <clears throat> a lot of the technique that we would use in this particular stitch is directly related to right angle weave. So if you go back in the seed bead school um, tab or in the uh, online and search for this particular bracelet that I did with Kate and Janice early on. And I think this one, there's two colorways. One's called New York, New York, and the other is called, right. uh, Austin, 
is the other one. Oh, right, um, right. That was a fun, so, pro like, that's such a beautiful project. Yeah, and this is, this is the same the same piece, uh, a little bit different embellishment, but if, on the back side, you can see that geometric shape that's happening with the right angle weave. And I, I took a, um, a moment last night while I was getting myself all prepared for this to um, print out a quick chart from this particular uh, project. And it's kind of fun to do things on a chart because you can actually draw on it. And the handout that I produced for, for this one has a blank page at the back. So the last page is all the same charts that we used during through the handout, but ones where you can draw in the colors yourself. So if you don't That's great. choose the colors that I love, choose your own colors, your own, but print out that last page, like make two or three copies. And it's just can be black and white, so it doesn't have to be color cheap. You can be doing it cheaply. But right angle weave, um, just to refresh everybody, um, means that the needle and thread is going to turn a corner as it goes around. Now, when we first do this, it's going to look like a circle. And that's good because coming up is going to be a circular right angle weave. Maybe that's what we'll call it. So the right angle weave we're going to be doing today, instead of having equal number of beads on each side, we're going to have an unequal number. And that's going to, what's mm. going to be gives us shape. But the process is going to be the same. When we build right angle weave, we generally start off with a big needle. And you can add to this at any time. So you can make this as long or short as you want. I started just with five units. Um, and each unit or each group that you make um, gives you some length to work from. And then you're going to add more on the side of that. Now you can add more on this side, add more on this side, add more coming towards it or going away. It's unlimited. And each time you do a row in right angle weave, all the units are precisely spaced right up against one another, right? These all have the same number of beads in them. So there's no decreasing and no change in this squared off kind of shape. So these little charts are really fun because they're easy to show you what beads on a side, two beads on a side, one bead on a side looks like. The stitch is exactly the same. It's just how many beads we happen to have on, on each side, but they all give us that geometric kind of feel. So really what we're going to use today is something that's blending these two, all right? So instead of having two beads on a side or one bead on a side we're going to have two sides with one bead and two sides with two beads and so that gives us that kind of more of a rounded little bit of a shape to it and so something that's a little bit different from right angle weave any right angle weave questions thoughts uh, no i think that um i'm going back and looking through um Let's see. No, I think that was pretty clear. Drea also did some links on um, how to find all of those great projects. And it's all today's project, Emily, is called Halcyon, correct? Yes, that's the, that was the name. Yeah, and you can watch it or you can find it if you're watching it live and you're this week and go right to the homepage of beadshop.com and there's a link and you'll find all of that. There's all the additional learning that's connected to that project as well as this handout uh, that Emily created. Um, so yeah, let's keep, let's keep going, Em. What thread, let's just go over real quick. Sure. You're going to use, so we're using the Goldberry Mix right. A. B, we're using needles, right? What size needles are you using? 12s? No, I'm up to a 10, which makes it threading that round fire line a little easier. And okay. I gotta say, fire line is, is a braided thread. Mm -hmm. And we talked a bunch about splitting our threads last couple of times we've talked about seed beads. It's a lot easier not to split fire line. Mm. And if you're gonna back out, I, but if you're going to back out, I would really suggest that you unthread your needle. Right. Um, I didn't use as much beeswax on this one as I normally do, but it mm -hmm. does help to hold the threads together. That little bit of tacky stickiness on the beeswax on the thread can really help a lot. We're going to do a lot more passes each unit of beads to make them a little more stable. So that okay. helps with that feeling that everything is kind of floppy and out of control. And the fire line, Emily, you're using, you're using the six pound? I am using the six pound. 
Okay, gotcha. Okay, so uh, with that, uh, let's take a look at what Emily's got. I'm gonna I'm gonna mute myself real quick so you don't hear me rustling beads. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk through this just on paper and then I'm gonna okay. do it in hand. I think that's the Great. easiest little step to do. Sure. And sure, sure. I'm only doing five units. I think it's fairly quick. And then if anybody comes up with questions, they can kind of jot them in at that point. So we're going to start off with um, six beads and we're making circles out of these six beads. So in each illustration that I did, I left a little black dot, which is helping you orient where you're at. I don't use a stopper bead with right angle weave. I tend to tie a knot. And in this case, since we're going to pass through these beads a few times, avoid tying a knot. I want the opening of that bead to be clear so that I can use it later. And I really won't need the knot once I get going. It will be unnecessary. So I'm going to take my thread. I'm going to start again with my typical yard and a half-ish of thread. I'm going to leave at least a 12-inch tail. So I'm leaving a longer thread tail than I usually do. But I'm going to thread my needle, <clears throat> pick up six beads, and for this one, I, I chose to do it in a kind of a particular pattern, which will be obvious later on. So you can choose to do this in a pattern or no pattern. It's your choice. So I'm going to pick up six beads, and it's going to be the berry color and then four of the pearl and one more berry. So my needle goes right around through all those beads, and it goes around to make a circle. So I'm going to go back through that first added bead, and I'm actually going to go through a couple of times. So circle around and then coming out one of the beads at the top. So this little unit now has a left side, a right side, a bottom side, and a top side. I'm going to come out at the top. I'm going to pick up two of the berry and now just three of the pearl. That means that I have five beads, five, and this becomes the sixth one. So like right angle weave, giving you a bead count um, is going to, often include the count of one other bead that's already established. I'm going to go through that top bead of that first unit, which is now the bottom bead of the second unit, circle around again, and pop out, turning a right angle. So we have to think of our thread as making a corner here, because really what we're looking to get is these corners happening with our thread. In actuality, they're not going to happen but that's the thought, all right? So I'm circling around and I'm coming out, I'm going this direction. Now, I started here, I circled around, went through that way, started here, circled around, came out, went through that direction. So my circles are actually changing direction and that's what right angle weave does for you. And that's normal and that's to be expected, okay? That means that we're absolutely just changing direction with our thread, sort of a figure eight. And if you're not changing that direction, you're probably not at the right spot. Like if I came out here, that would be the wrong place to add more beads because my thread's going to go straight across this opening. It's not going to turn. So I want to go around and around like that. Okay. That makes sense. Kate, shout out if you've got any questions. I'm going to there just for a second if you need to take yeah a there you go no, that looks good and this will make a lot of sense when um when emily does it there is one quick question emily sure. why are we passing back through beads two times actually we're going to pass back through beads three to four times so we're doing okay. that because we want the beads to be firm in their attachment and to one another. Now, part of that is going to be adding the thread to fill up the holes a little bit. And that's the same thing we do with right angle weave. We could go through each one twice, but most of the time with right angle weave, we're going to come back and do another embellishment somewhere else along the line. And so we know that we're going to go back through those beads again. If I was doing size 11 beads and size and four pound fire line, I would absolutely just go through a couple times, but that mm -hmm. will give us some stability. And I'll show you what that looks like in one moment because you're going to see it happen just right in front of your eyes. 
And these are just to uh, confirm. These are ADOTs that you're these are using. ADOTs. Yeah. Yeah. Using and in this list. maybe you could. Do you have any 11s? And not right now, I'm because I don't want to interrupt your flow. But if you have any 11s laying around, maybe we could do an ADOT 11 ot comparison. Um, in this size tip, wise, side by side. What's that? Uh, no, just side by side, like on the back of the uh, right angle weave you have to the left. Are those eights or are those 11s? This is 11. Yeah. Okay. So folks, can you see how that's an 11 and that's an eight? Yeah. Beautiful, Emily. That's exactly the shot we need. Yeah. So 11s do give a lot of detail. There's no getting around that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I do fall for eights and sixes sometimes too because they feel like they have a little more presence. And you know, when we did the um, the the uh, uh, square stitch with eights, mm -hmm. we could have done that with sixes too. And right, a right. Beefier look, um, uh, but and we could have done it with elevens to have a very delicate kind of um, detailed look. Um, so I I do like both for sure. Yeah, no, that's just the shot. That's perfect. And then again, you're using the six pound fire line. If people have four pound, what do you reckon? Yay or nay? You can do the same. You can use the same four, four pound if you like. I would go figure mm -hmm. on going through um, at a minimum three times, but maybe four. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Em. I think we're good. Carry on, please. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and pick up my, my first six beads. And, you know, there is nothing like being correct on the very first stitch. So take your time and take a little look. You can see there's a little bit of unevenness in the shapes and size of these beads. That, um, I'm out of focus. There we go. That uh, berry bead at the end is a little bit narrower. There's one narrowish peach and then, or pearl, and then this uh, berry at the end is definitely a little bit bigger. Okay. And that's okay. It's not going to make it hill, uh, not a bit of difference <clears throat> in this particular one. So I'm just going to slide it down and I'm passing the place where my thread doubles over. Now I would leave yourself about a 12 inch tail here. That 12 inch tail, we're going to use it later for our fringe. And I'm just going to pull my beads right over my fingertip. Let me tell you why I do this. And, and I think this is helpful in the sense of you don't have to figure this part out for yourself. I'm actually doing this to push the thread, see if I can get a good shot, down to the bottom of the tunnel that is the hole of the bead. Okay? That way I can send my new thread right across the top and not split the threads. I do this as a habit now. And I know that it takes a minute to get into a habit. I don't know, 30 days, 30, somebody will chime in with the right information. Um, I'm just going to go through all these beads again. Oh, I got a good camera angle on this, Kate. I'm very happy. I got lots of room for my hands under here. Oh, good. Yeah, and it looks terrific, Em. It's good. perfect. Good. You know, we improve. Every time we improve. So here's Going where... Going live is not for the of heart. Here's another place where the beads are a little bit... They're not really laying the way I want them to lay. Um, and this is a, your pro tip for the day. Stick your all in there. So this is really the kind of the look we're after. Two on the sides and one north and south, top and bottom. Okay, That's really the kind of the, the look we're after. But for a moment, we don't have to worry about this. It's not going to really matter too much. And I need to pass around again and come out that top pearl bead, which is that guy right there. So let me bring my little diagram back into screen here to be behind me so you can see it. Oops, I shouldn't have put it underneath anything. There it is. So I just completed that first group, right? This guy, and I'm on to this one. So depending on where you're coming out of your bead, at, at which side, to the right or to the left, doesn't really matter. I would pick up then two of the berry and three of the pearl, okay? So two, 
and three. That's five. Now I know I wanted six. This one now becomes bead number six in this unit. Okay, so I'm gonna circle around. Aha, looking better already. There's what we wanted. So that means I wanna go through the beads again. And this will help firm up this unit, make it kind of feel like it's part of the party here. So we want it to be part of the party. That looks great. And so um, your, those two beads, since you're using, I can see now you're talking about using multiple colors or, you know, not using a mix or whatever. It's a little bit easier to save your place when you don't have a whole jumble of color there. I would have no, I, I didn't really have much problem with this myself. Mm -hmm. but I, I, see, I probably would. <laughs> you could see pretty clearly that it was going to be super confusing to show someone else how to do it. And so, right. <laughs> That was a, that was really, I, am I saving myself? Yes. Um, yeah. So as these guys are all kind of sitting to the side to, oh, and you know what? Perfect. I made a mistake. Perfect. So I made an error. This is a, this is wrong. Okay. I'm actually going to unthread my needle and I'm going to undo this and let me, I'll show you where I made my mistake. It was a very, it's a very common one. And um, if you have multiple passes through your beads, separate your beads a little bit, give them a little tug, and then find where those threads are overlapping. See where there's two threads? And find the one that's the one that you want to pull on. Just be right. patient. Right, don't, don't pick out both threads at the same time. Yeah, it, that's never not going to work. So no. I made a mistake. I really need to be coming out of this bead here. Oh, yeah. Because it's not part of the pair, right? Right. I mean, I am, yeah. I'm glad I caught myself because I would hate it later, and I would be mad looking at myself. Ugh. But that's what happens. Seed beads are pesky little buggers sometimes. Somebody says this is exactly the point where they mess up. So thank you for pointing it out. Yeah. Okay. So back to back to square one. Actually, square two. So literally, you know, this, this, this is where my thread's coming out. That's going to be part of my fringe later. So I'm going to leave mm -hmm. it hang, and it does help orient me to where things are. In the diagrams, it's that little black dot. There's no knot involved, just that little black dot. So I know I need two berry, three pearl. Now I'm back on track. Oh, must be the UPS guy driving up or Amazon. Somebody's delivering. One of my dogs. Somebody's delivering. <laughs> One of the dogs is barking. I don't think it's Amazon. I don't think I have any outstanding packages at this point. They've all come, those hardworking guys, gals. Yeah. Out there. Our Amazon guy was so great yesterday. A package inadvertently opened when he picked it up. <laughs> and he was just horrified. So he knocked on the door and he said, it was closed when I picked it up, but it, it opened or whatever. I'm like, it's okay. He goes, check and make sure everything was there. He was really nice. So I think I my uh, gift card to put out for my Robert, the mailman. Um, oh, that's nice. Nice guy. So I usually give him a Starbucks gift card for Christmas because I figure probably hit Starbucks at least once during his day. So oh. Circle number three, I'm using three, three pearl and two berry. And, you know, people, different uh, designers refer to colors differently. Um, sometimes they use the color number. I think it's probably just about as easy to pick a, a short name for something and kind of stick with it. Um, if I have to talk to you guys about it, it's, it's a lot of repeats. So... All right. So Emily, your needle comes out of, that's the last, it's coming out between the, the, what am I trying to say? Here's the North beat or the beat at 12 o'clock. Right. Six, to uh -huh. the west, to the east. It's coming out between the North and the two to the east. Correct. And then the one on the North is going to be incorporated into your next loop 
correct. Gotcha. And it could be coming out to the east or to the west of North. It doesn't make a difference. It but doesn't. And it will alternate. You're right. Right? And that's fine. And you can circle gotcha. around if you need. And you want to come out on a different side, that's okay, too. You can circle around till you get there. Or start differently at the beginning. I think I went... Uh, my needle and threaded. So I went clockwise. Uh huh. Um, uh, after doing Kumihimo on the Marodai, I find um, kind of north, south, east, and west to be very easy for me. Yeah. If some people are better with the face of a clock, you know, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Those are basically the same um, as north, south, east, west. Right. Right. So now you're going to come up with those two. You're going to go through that white, and that white is the first bead of your next Correct. round. Gotcha. So which, okay. Okay. Tell me what color beads I need next. Can you you need, yes, you need three white mm -hmm. and two berry. Perfect. There you because go. you're flip flopping, you're going. Sometimes you're going back and forth from beads going on the top. Now you just added those top beads. Now as you go around the next ones, you'll add the berry first, right? Correct. Yeah. Because you're going to the bottom. It, it's one mm -hmm. of those things about the, the right angle weave that I really do like. It alternates the directions of the circle. So mm -hmm. every time you made a circle or a unit to the, to the clockwise or the left, you're going to, the next one you make is going to go the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. I am not a real um, good left and right person. I I don't know why. I never, I have to sometimes stop and look at my hands to, before I say what's right and what's left. So yeah, so now you're going to put on the two berry and the three um, pearl. white yeah. pearl. Yeah. Actually, I'm and not then, because we're done. But notice also how Emily's utilizing that all and she's telling those seed beads who's boss. And when she comes in and she puts on her second row, anything that's kind of wonky on that row that's going to attach is going to straighten up. It's going to help it a lot. Mm hmm. Yep. Done Looks deep. great. All right. I just wanted to grab another, bring in another chart for you. Great. I'm going to mute myself so again, you don't hear rustling. Sure, 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 sure. So this next row, um, I'm actually going to bring in all berry colored beads. So one of the things that's always fun about learning a new stitch is learning out, learning how to add and change colors and how things adapt and how things change. If I were looking at this first, what we just did is this row over here, right? Our six beads, our six beads, our six beads. Now, two of my beads from my first row become part of row two. And I also want to note that I'm offsetting this next set of circles. So this is where we kind of walk away from right angle weave. Um, we're going to offset these so that the next set of circles we make nest in between, sort of honeycomb-like, um, in between the circles that we already made. This is also going to change the height of this second row. So row two is going to be a little higher. Row three, when we flip around, actually starts down here at the bottom. And so it naturally is also going to be a little higher, but we're going to be down here instead of up here. We're going to flip it over. So we worked our way up here. We're going to work our way down and then we're going to flip over and work our way up again. I find it easier to flip in this second part, but if you don't need to flip, your choice. Okay. So Circling, circling around up here, we're now going to use these two beads on the outside edges. To start with, we're going to start with just one of these outside berry beads. And we're going to just use one to circle around and pick up a new set of beads. So if I'm just using one, that means I'm going to need five beads because I need six. Okay. If I was using two, I'm going to need less. If I'm using three, going to need less. So we each time we do this, we're going to use some beads from an old row, some beads from a new row. Okay. So let's just say for kicks and grins that my thread circles around and comes typically out here. This is normally where I would stop. I'm going to go through one berry bead. 
I'm going to then pick up five more berry beads and circle around. So see how I'm making my, my circle, same circle I did before. Now it's offset and slightly above, right? I'm going to circle around till I come out at the bottom again. Hooray. And now I'm going to make the circle using these two beads on this side. I only used one in the first part of row two because I want that to be set up and that sets me up for the next couple of sets. So I'm going to scooch out and I'm going to pick up, counting this bead, I'm going to pick up three beads, one, two, three, and circle through two. Okay. So when you see this thread path happening, there's going to be a little opening in between here and then the threads are never going to go straight across. They're always going to be pulling into the beads themselves. Circle around like this. I'm going to come out again on the bottom. Pick up the two from the previous row and three more. Circling around. So you can see that this is really, it's kind of all the same. But what I want to look at is I'm actually picking up berry beads from different previous row circles. And I'm sorry that sounds so confusing. But that offset and keeping that berry, that next circle that I'm in between the previous ones is what gives this this nice round shape, right? Circling around. So from here out, it's three beads. Circling around. Now this bead becomes one of the group. Circling around, circling around, circling around, and popping out. And then we're kind of back to square one. So let's do that row. Okay, so here I am again at the top of row uh, two, finishing up row one and getting into row two. Let me pull just a few more berry beads, just in case. Okay. I'm gonna go through one berry bead. That's the topmost one. I'm gonna pick up five more beads to make six, All right? I started with one, I gotta have five more to make six. Circle around. And again, I'm going to go through this a couple times. So one of the things that's interesting about seed beading threads is they tend to be small. And you can use that to your advantage using small beads, small thread. But if you want to build up the stiffness of this piece, if you want this to have more body, the best way to do it is to go through things multiple times. You might think, hmm, can't I just use a micro sealon for this? You could, but figure out a needle and then come back and see me. Okay. So I know. I That's right. That needle. micro C one is hard to string through those tens. Yeah. It's, uh, I want to say next to impossible for me, next to impossible. And if I can't do it, and I'm not saying that nobody can, but I can't do it. I know it's a tougher call. Okay. So here I am. I've done my first <laughs> circle. Oops. Sorry. And I want to bring my needle again through my bead at the bottom. And I'm going to use my awl to help round that up so you can kind of see. So I'm coming out, uh, coming out here through the bead where I joined up. I'm going to go through this one at the bottom of the berry. And now I'm considering that I'm going to make a new circle. And I know that this counts as one, and I'm going to need two down here. So that's six. So that's three out of six, three more. One, two, three. And I'm going to grab these two. And just in a second, I'll show you what that intersection looks like. Because this is the first place where it really begins to show clearly what I'm talking about. The right angle intersection would look the same, but it would be consistent on all four sides. And this one looks a little different because it's not as squared off or geometric. It's more round. Okay, so hold on here. Let me get really nice and close. And this is the intersection that I'm talking about right here. So in that intersection, the threads are not crossing one another. How's that, Kate? The threads are not crossing across. Yeah, that looks good. I'm super clear. They're wrapping around into each circle of this group, right? So 
with right angle weave, we go through at least one time. If you go through a second time, it gives you a little bit of more stiffness and body. So I'm counting on that fire line to help me with that, but I'm also counting on slightly filling up the holes in these beads with thread. And I am taking this kind of a step at a time here so that you guys can pick up on the steps. So I am coming out of the bottom bead, the south bead. I would pick up this side bead and this one as well, and then add three more beads to give me my circle of six. Oh, that's a good name for this stitch, circle of six. That is a good name. Right? Sounds sort of space age. Nice. And I also think it's a good plan that if you're learning a new stitch, give yourself all the advantages. Be fully caffeinated. Be fed. Be in a quiet place where no one's going to bother you for a little while. I saw a really funny um, uh, little video on Instagram the other day about how to approach a knitter. And oh, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> that if you walk up to them and they're knitting and they're smiling, then it's okay to say something. But if they're frowning and counting, step away. <laughs> yeah, far. I can, I can, uh, I can uh, affirm that. Awesome. Yes, <laughs> I can. So I can here's, my, here's my thread coming out of my bottom bead of circle I just created. I'm going to pick up three more beads because I'm going to pick up this beef that would make four five and six and then back through that bottom south bead Oops. emily i was looking at some you know emily sends me ideas pretty much daily which is amazing and so i have like five years videos of, and um, yeah i have five years worth of ideas that uh that are simmering on the back burner um, one of the cool things that I saw this morning, and it kind of sh dovetails with like your color blocking that you have here, a while back, and I think it was made in Delicas, it was kind of this striped pattern that alternated with a um, with just a plain solid pattern. Um, and so the seed beads were done, you know, one by one so it was like a light and a dark or whatever so that created the stripe and there was a block of color um it was pretty cool so i that has kind of been resonating with me we also have the size 15s that are coming i have them i can see them from where i'm sitting they're going to go out to emily today and they'll be up uh, very early in 2023 um so I have a project waiting for them I'm so excited. The thing about 15s, and as you get smaller and smaller um, with the beads, they are, of course, harder to use because they're smaller, but you can also get a lot of nuance of color because the stitches are so, um, you know, the beads are so small. So you're just adding little small drops of color so it feels like you're making tiny little stitches so i'm super excited i want to do something with some kind of striped and solid pattern or i don't know but that really resonated with me it looked great and this I, kind of has that same kind of uh color blocking which i like yeah. a lot yeah absolutely so here's two rows pretty quick right so we're going to add that next row and that's going to be row three so row three is down here, and I'm going to do the same process that I did for row two for row three. And I just, gosh darn it, how did I lose my pencil? Oh, there it is. Okay. There that it was, is. That was fast. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to bring my needle and thread, and this is an incorrect arrow right there. It shouldn't be there. I'm going to bring it right out um, on my top of my berry pear right here. So this is actually these guys. And I'm going to use just this one berry pair to connect my new row of Sienna. And this is going to be five beads. And it's going to go around like that. Just four. So this is the same, same. Right? Same, same as we did before. Yeah. And it's the last, and it's the last row. We're almost done. We're almost done. 
right? Wrapping around, wrapping around, wrapping around, wrapping around. So two, except for the very first one, and we're doing this because that first one has to happen on one bead to help us give us that offset. Right. This was kind of the first thing that hurt my brain a little bit when I was recreating this out of my head. I knew exactly what I wanted it to look like, but I had to kind of make that happen. Moving it offset gives me the ability to have my circles nest in. So they're sharing beads from two previous circles, each new circle that I'm making. Okay. Right angle weave is not like that. But this stitching, this thread path is very similar. And gotcha. I see the difference. I see that now that you've just pointed if, that out. If you've done some right angle weave, this will feel very natural to you. The step that you have to remember is that we really need to offset so that we tuck in like a honeycomb, that we tuck in in between the previous circles. We're not side by side. We're tucked mm -hmm. in. Okay. All right. So for myself, I think it's easier to flip over, right? I started here, I worked my way up, I worked my way down. I find working up this way on this outside edge, maybe because I'm a righty, that it's gonna be frustrating. So I'm just gonna flip over. So now what's a little bit of added level of difficulty is that my beads that I'm gonna be looking for to join my new circles to are all one color. So they're not standing out from the others the way they did before. Okay. So it's a little bit, a little bit of a moment of extra difficulty. That's okay. You got this. You can totally do it. I promise. So I'm going to pull the Sienna out and I love these Sienna. They have a little bit of a texture to them as well, which is kind of a nice contrast to um, our other colors that are, are, have some, um, luster on them and a b kind of finish so it's kind of gives you a little bit i felt very neapolitan about this like it was a neapolitan ice cream you get yeah it's, yeah i do all right neapolitan's so my favorite and i always save chocolate for last i eat strawberry first oh and i don't really love strawberry ice cream that's no. why i eat it first so yeah <laughs> although if we're talking about soft serve it's vanilla dipped in chocolate is the only way to go Hmm. Yeah, I, miss, yeah, I, miss. I think I, 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 I could agree with you there. I'm looking very hard for a soft serve ice cream maker to have at home. <laughs> That's hilarious. I love that story. I really do want one. So next row begins by using one bead of the two, the pair on the side, okay, that I want to have to attach to. And that's that offset again. So that counts as one bead which means I need five. Yes, correct. Right. And will you bring that a little closer to the camera, M, after you complete the I stitch? I had my elbows down it. so that my hands didn't shake. Yeah, no worries. Yep, there you go. Do you feel like this is a better camera setup than we did the last time, Kate? Yeah, it it's, time? you know, we're we're learning slowly but surely. I still have to perfect. I've got a couple of camera issues that I'm working on, but it's always a learning process. We never stop learning. And I'm, I'm sorry that you guys have to look at my poor thumbnail that got damaged many years ago. And never well, to scroll back to the right way. You've got, you've got worker hands. I've got worker yes. hands. It's true. I can't, I can't keep, I cannot keep a manicure. No. I'm a manicure type, I'm afraid. No, I got a manicure last week and my nails look like I've been digging in the yard. And <laughs> I haven't, well, but they look like it. I'm too much of a tomboy. I don't think I could ever pretend to be the girly girl. Um, I reconnected uh, with a girlfriend of mine who lives nearby from high school. Funny that we ended up in the same town after all these years. And she said, the only girl card I play is that I get my nails done. And she has beautiful yeah. nails and they just, they look yeah. amazing, you know? Um, but I, it's just not my. Yeah. That's my thing. My hand, like Drea, Drea has those like really, I always tell her you have super nice nail beds. My yes. nail beds, not super nice. Yeah. No, I got. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not, not especially Girl elongated thing. or elegant. 
but that's yeah, okay. Not, not my thing. No. Um, but uh, I do like getting my toenails done once and again, now and again. That's always kind of Me fun. too. I just got my pedicure and so, my toes are festive for the holiday. But I realized so, that my thumbnail doesn't, doesn't look so happy. No. Yes. You're, uh, so for this, so let's say that you're going to elongate this for those of you who, instead of an earring, want to do a bracelet. Correct. So Emily, before she does the fringe on the bottom, and we'll move to that pretty quickly, she's going to give us a measurement on these five units. So you can kind of multiply those five mm -hmm. units by whatever length you might want to do. And then the closure, I would look at Emily's right angle weave closure. I think you did like a loop and a bead or something to close it, M, didn't you? I felt like we added a clasp, but Yeah, or you could add a clasp, you could but you could do a beaded loop on the end. I don't remember now. There's a lot of different ways that you could finish this finish this off. So if you go through our many seed bead bracelet projects, you can just kind of jump to the the closer closure section. Um, and there was a couple of questions. I'm going to share, uh, Emily, while you're finishing this. Uh, Drea always takes care of her nails and she literally just put cuticle on 10 seconds ago. Thank you, Drea. Good to know. <laughs> good I to know. Well, last night they held up pretty good. Yeah, I do too. I got the cuticle uh, uh, oil tip from you, but still it looks like I've been uh, scrounging in the mud. Um, someone also asked about the horizontal peyote. So we do have the horizontal peyote that Allie did. And there is a water lily. It's called water lily. Um, there's a handout. Whoops, I meant to do this one. There's a handout. It's on the project page for water lily. Um, and it's linked in the additional learning. For some reason, we couldn't get a button on that page to say, um, download handout there is some glitch on it but it's there so we have and folks for those of you who are kind of new to watching our bead shop lives um on beadshop.com there literally is hundreds of projects there literally are on there and many of them have additional learning or um short videos uh that go with the long video stuff like that so but if you ever have any questions you can always email us right at info at beadshop.com and we will get back to you so I... that's looking great emily and again that's I the did. six I, made pound. A little I had to stop i had to unneed oh. one i made all right i picked up an extra bead there and i was wondering what that hmm. was funny why did it look so funny not in a good way uh, right so i had to just take one little <laughs> step back you know it's not a bad thing if you feel like you've gone wrong don't don't do that extra stitch through you know wait for just mm -hmm. a second i actually went through this bead and all those guys i really only mm. need this one mm, right right that's that's the one sometimes when i'm doing i remember when uh -huh. i did the right angle so leave with you go back and forth right that's, right yeah it looks so that's your last row you're you finished yep. i'm done Done with the okay. beading part of this, or the so, uh, circling around part. Emily's going to take a quick measurement of that five, and it's the five that directly relate to the five that she put in the handout. Um, and then you can do a little bit of just, uh, deducing, a little bit of adding up to see what those five units, how many you would and need you know, to I'm circle. sorry that I didn't, and he, here's, a, here's a little bit of math that I would encourage you to do. Mm-hmm. I did not measure this portion, which mm -hmm. that first row that you do is probably going to change in length. It's going to mm -hmm. shrink up or expand, shrink probably. So although I'm happy to give you this measurement, I would also give it with a little bit of a, of a, of a warning. Of a warning. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and measure again what you've got here. And then when you get your second row on, measure that again and see if the mm. measurement's holding true before you go mm -hmm. to hold on a second just find that ruler underneath my tweezers and other things so just about one inch okay right i'm measuring not in the middle because this isn't really correct i'm measuring one inch right mm-hmm 
All right, great. Thank you so much. Sure. So I would assume that there's some change here from from this from the first group. Uh, yeah, set of circles. A little bit of tightening up. Tightening up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I have yeah. a finished up piece with two threads. I have a thread coming out of the bottom down here, which is going to be fringe, and I have a thread coming out here, which I'm going to use to attach my ear wire. Um, I'm going to make a little pico at the top using those bronze beads, my favorite color of bead. The bead I probably use more of than any other color. Is what now, M? The the uh, metallic bronze. Yes, so uh, I'm. Bronze and the I'm right there with you. Those are probably my two most used beads. Yeah, so I love. I'm those. gonna circle around, and when I get back to these berry beads, I'm gonna move myself my needle up the uh, to the top, and I'm gonna pick up one, two, three more bronze beads, three bronze beads, and I'm just gonna circle around here at the top. Oh dear, someone must be delivering again. Another. My my dogs are just, they had a tough morning because it's today, Wednesday is the day that the gardeners come. At the mm -hmm. mowers and blowers. And um, gosh, they seem to spend a t lot of time right by my house. So. Yeah, it feels like every day is mowers and blowers in our neighborhood. And it does feel it's like crazy. that one year too. I got one yeah. guy who blows bare dirt, you know. Oh God. Yeah, I know that leaf blowers are super convenient, but well, and oh. I have them, so I not. It's not like I don't get it, but yeah, um, I know. So, but gosh, I'm like, uh, please. A lot of noise <laughs> and a lot of dirt in the air. Yeah, I'm actually gonna take the ear wire off one of my previous earrings and put it on this one. And okay. I did, little, I did a little chain to these ear wires. I don't know if anybody noticed. Probably no one noticed. I did you flip did you flip the loop? I did. Yeah, I I I do that all the time. Normally the loop is in plane with the rest of this ear wire. So mm -hmm. um you're not seeing that circle. But I mm -hmm. wanted to use it to slip through the bead at the top of this earring. So I actually turned it. So I grabbed it with my chain nose pliers and gave it a quarter turn. Okay. And then I'm gonna open the loop. We always open that loop by swinging it open across the plane rather than undoing the circle. Right. Pulling it out. So it's one of those hard won things that you have to remember because you'll mess it up and then you'll hate yourself. But I'm going to get rid of this thread first. So I went around three times or so um, on that little pico and I'm going to bring my needle and thread back into my beadwork. Now, <clears throat> for right angle weave or our lacy net that we're doing today, I would tie knots to end off my thread. I didn't tie one at the beginning because I didn't need it, um, but I will tie it at the ends of my thread. So I brought my needle and thread just through a couple of beads. It doesn't matter which direction you're going, but still following my thread path. And I'm going to just pick up the thread in between the beads. I'm going to pull it through put my needle through that loop and pull it up tight. A little half hitch knot. I just uh, sewed some buttons on the shirt that I'm wearing today last night, some new buttons. And I did the same kind of knot with that. Nice. New buttons are like a new lease on life. Yeah, I bought this little shirt and I really like it, but the buttons were pity eye. Yeah, I have a jacket that was super expensive but the buttons, I'm like, oh, God, 1983 called, and they want the buttons off my junior my junior year high school blazer back. So um, I, I'm i changing them out to something. Knots is plenty, and I like to go through a couple more beads and then clip off my thread. And really for Fireline, the Zeron pliers, cutting with a little bit of tension, I think are the best. They yes. Do. Agreed. Agreed. So now I can slip this loop through that size eight bead. Who knew that was going to work, huh? I did. I did. Yeah, that was good. Close it. And there's my ear really ear. smart right through that bead. Yeah. And you're not swinging around on the thread. So yeah. it's a pretty um, strong 
connection there. Yeah, and it's I think it's kind of um, clever, say elegant. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I once in a blue moon I get to do something pretty and sweet and not not clunky from the barnyard. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes I, I'm too much of a tomboy. So putting that needle and thread on, and now we are just gonna play with my, these also, I think these are just an amazing bead. Um, yeah, and, that pink, yeah. That galvanized pink is just, yeah. it's so pretty. Um, and I just think it just, oh, it has some oomph. It really pops. Yeah, up. it really does. You know? now. These are, will you show the finished earring real quick um, over there? Because this is another place, folks, where I think that you could do some personalization. So see how Emily has her three rows below. Um, you could extend those rows down a little, right, Em? You could make them a little longer. Sure. Throw some drops in, throw some fringe in. Um, your fringe. I chose kind of a modest fringe, but um, mm -hmm. you know, this color I think kind of makes up for it. It has a little bit of a feather effect. Um, mm -hmm. but I it do does, it, yeah, it feels like it hangs into that. Um, oh gosh, I was going for sort of a Rococo kind of color scheme, you know, thinking mm -hmm. about cherubs in churches in Venice, you know, sort mm -hmm. of lovely warm kind of tones and you know it's it's interesting when we talk about holiday colors and red and green kind of is, has that that color for christmas i think it's so much it's so fun to kind of break that color scheme um mm -hmm. but like again of our winter days these are colors that are kind of warm and kind of inviting um and uh yeah, I just, that's, I really liked all of them, but certainly longer fringe, more exotic fringe. If you're willing to go that direction, you're totally, totally down with it. Mm -hmm. No, I like it. And in the, you folks are going to see coming up, there's a holiday mix, a seed bead mix that's going to drop next week that I made. And it's my version. It's my version of holiday that has nothing to do with traditional holiday. <laughs> and if you bought the two mixes in November that I did, the bead mixes and the, the button mixes, this uh, mix is gonna complement it just perfectly if I do say so myself. Okay, Fringe, M. So this is a, uh, let me bring this guy back in so it can kind of be in the background here. Um, this is a sort of a pyramid of Fringe. Um, a pyramid in the sense of it starts small and grows in length. I'm going to take one bead to start with in the middle. Pick up. I'm coming out. This is where I started. This was the very first bead we put on was that mm -hmm. very bead right there. And I'm going to reach right across and go through that sienna that's just hanging out, looking like a perfect little pair for it. And then I'm going to pick up three. This really could not be an easier fringe. I think I, I really don't think it could be easier, you know, um, maybe it could, but maybe not. If there were no fringe, maybe it would be easier, but mm. yes, very, very simple yet effective looking, um, design, I think. Three. And then, uh, so I came out on the, uh, curl and I'm going to try seven, right? And I'm going to reach across and grab this sienna over here. And it just kind of grows sort of naturally. And then this last one, I'm going to say it's 13. Let me double check. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Oh, really? 12? I would have said I put an odd number in there. Two, four, six, eight, 12. Oh, and I think I put in the handout it was 13. Sorry. It's actually 12. Two, oh, look at the difference in sizes. By golly. And those guys. So, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Looping around. And giving us that 
a little bit of a loopy loopy fringe. There we go. And it just depends. I mean, you can do whatever number. Oh, absolutely. Like you can add as many yeah. as you like or as few yeah. as you like. So I'm now going to work my needle around some of these little circles to tie off this thread. And again, I'm just going to follow that same thread path that's already in the beads. If I go across um, an opening, it's going to be a place where it's going to be visually apparent. And so I want to kind of keep myself not so much like that. I want to sort of stay stealthy. And you know, I didn't, did I bookend these? Oh, I did do it. Okay. I made them, I set them up opposite sides, right? Yeah, that's nice. You can have it either way. Yeah, either way. This would look, this doesn't look as quite the same. No. Right. Okay. I'm going to grab a thread in between the beads and pull it down to make a small loop. I got to tell you, that small loop trick, hmm. That was also a hard one victory. My sewing and my beading skills uh, toolkit. If you stick your needle through this while it's a giant loop, there's a very, very high chance that you're going to get a tangle. Yeah, that is correct. So make a small loop. Wait till it's small before you bring your needle through. You can even put it through a couple times if you want to make like a surgeon's knot. And circle around. I like going through just a few more beads to kind of hide that tail of thread. So when you're making this as a bracelet, you're going to want to do that to add thread. I do that same. Uh, this is going to be one where you really don't want to lose your place. So I change my thread by adding a new bead for a new needle first, and then going through and um, adding that new thread, then going back and dealing with the old thread. And I'm just gonna round up my circles here slightly. There we go. Nice. And let me give also a shout out for those Zeron cutters. Ugh. Emily, I'm just cutting some six pound fire line here. It's and like cutting. It's like I couldn't cut it with anything else. So no. I say treat yourself this holiday, folks, yeah. if you don't have one, that Zeron thread cutter. You know what else I did with this um, project? I did a little, I made myself a little sample, bead sample card. Oh, that's cute. So this was all the colors in the mix. And, you know, mixes kind of can come and go. And really, I need to write the names on here of all the colors. But um, this is not a bad idea for kind of keeping track of stuff that you've done or you have. Um, uh, just another kind of way to kind of go about it. It's very old school, you know, literally strung it on, uh, tied a knot, put a piece of tape over the back and nice. You know, um, but this was a way that I was trying to keep track of all the beads I was using. Um, and, um, looks like I forgot to put the bronze one on there. So close, not so close, but no cigar. So, um, there's your pair of loopy net earrings. Kind of fun, huh? Yeah, they look great, Emily. Yeah. It was a fun way to use that mix for sure. And I urge you, if you haven't, you know, if you have some beads at home, you want to try your own mixes, you can mix. You can see we didn't use that many beads. Um, no, you should get a couple pairs um, yeah. out of this for sure. If yeah. you think you're going to do a bracelet, though, I uh, I would be tempted to get two tubes. Um mm -hmm. Especially if you're not going to do the crazy ass mix, crazy pants mix mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. um, but you're going to do um, all in color stripes and color blocks. Um, mm -hmm. I think I would be super tempted to get two tubes. Yeah, no, I, and also this mix, there are a few exclusive colors in the mix that we will be adding eventually, but for now, um, they are exclusive to the mix. Wow, we got it right up till 12 o'clock, Kate. Yeah, right? Good times. Uh, I want to show you, folks, just a couple of things. Let me um, hold that 
hold that thought. Let's look at Emily's earrings for just a couple more seconds here. And I want to grab, <clears throat> as I walk over here, things to tempt you because that's how I am. Um, on Friday, just uh, to let you all know, we are going to do, I'm going to put us back on Emily. So let me get rid of this and you and me. And here we are. There we are. Hi, guys. Thanks there for having are. fun. Um, these are the 15s that I'm going to be sending to Emily. Oh, look at them all. So many 15s. Plus, we got a special new thread for 15s. Oh. We did get Ceylon, but we got the Ceylon. It's super tiny just for 15s. The Nymo knockoff. The Nymo, similar to Nymo. Yeah. Sim similar, uh, similar, but all of these colors, Emily, are coming to you. Oh, yummy. Cool. To try those I out. I got to buy another box from my feed shop inventory. Right, another box. Um, and then I've got uh, that mix that's coming soon. You'll see this. Stay tuned right. to your newsletter. Yeah, yeah. Everyone is saying, Emily, what a brilliant project. They love this. There it is. Well, I think it's a lot of fun, you know? Um, yeah. And uh, makes me, you know? Why not? It was fun. Um, also, um, you can go download that handout, read it over. It'll be a super big help. Jump on over to all of Emily's projects because a lot of these, this learning kind of dovetails on other learning and there's always a nugget in there. At well, least one to five nuggets in next each project. Year, next year, 2023, we're going to be producing a lot more shorts. Mm -hmm. So just the facts, ma'am, just the, the nuggets that you need to have. Um, and hopefully this will be much easier when you're having a struggle and you want to look something up. Um, yeah. I'm a big, big dictionary encyclopedia thesaurus person. I love to look stuff up and research things. But sometimes when you're in the midst and hot on the path of something, um, it's nice to be able to just get that little. Yeah, you, know, you want that little. Use this kind of thread. Hmm. You know, so um, that's coming up in the new year. I've got a long list. If you have any suggestions, feel free to let Kate or me know um, of things that you're you're interested in. You want a a good dive into, but just that we're gonna really hone in on these. Are gonna be short, five to ten minutes, and just about one subject, not a yeah. lot of drifting off. So you'll other things. That's right. Not a, not a lot of chat. So <laughs> I think zero. I think. You folks will love those zero chat, but we're not stopping our lives. So don't worry. It's just, no, a, no. it's, just, a, no. it's no. just an addition. Also, I wanted to let you folks know Friday, I am doing a free tip Friday. We, uh, I'm going to be doing something with Chinese knotting cord. So you will have to what? jump in and see what those, um, what that stitch is going to be. Um, we do have someone's asking about square stitch. A uh, square stitch necklace. Um, I'm sure we'll get some more. Yeah. Uh, we'll get some more, some more um, ideas coming. So Emily, thank you as always. It was amazing. Merry Christmas, I, Happy New Year, everybody. Yeah, and we are going through. If you haven't been reading our newsletters. We've been doing some uh, specials for Hanukkah. Those are up. Emily had her holiday story yesterday. I had my holiday story tomorrow. And there are more holiday stories from Drea and from Janice coming. So uh, they're a cute read. So I liked your story a lot, Emily. So you have to go to the newsletter to read it everybody. So with that being said, don't forget, you can find all of the information on the project and products from today's broadcast right on our website. Uh, don't forget to sign up for our newsletter for all the latest stuff from beadshop.com. And of course, find us on all of our social. If you do make a project with Beadshop, go ahead and give us uh, a shout out 
and we will be glad to add it to our stories on Instagram. Join us over at the Bead Table on Facebook. So many great projects that you all post on there. We love it. And in January, we are having, uh, we're going to do a fun monthly challenge uh, for those of you who want to join in, and it'll be posted on the Bead Table as well as in the newsletter. So if you don't do Facebook, um, no worries, you'll be able to participate as well. Um, and of course, hit that like, subscribe, and follow button right on YouTube. We're so close to 100,000 followers. I would love to hit that goal in 2023. So give us that follow and share all of our information with ever you think would like some beady goodness, because every time you share and comment and like, it helps other people find our our little business here behind the scenes. We really appreciate it. Well, happy holidays to you, Em. Thank you, Kate. Happy, you too. Best to all your happy family. You too. We're going to hit the ground running in 2023, and I can't wait to share our adventures in Tucson with everybody. But you'll be seeing people soon on the live, so this isn't, uh, this isn't a fond farewell. It's just a see you next time, Em. See you next time, Katie. Bye. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. Bye-bye.